Delhi, sir. It's a great privilege and honor for me to welcome you all to the 208th Foundation Day of Indian Museum Kolkata. On this day in 1814, a Danish botanist, Dr. Nathaniel Wallach, laid the foundation for this museum. And over the years, this museum became a very important cultural institution, not only in our country, but for the entire Asia Pacific region. Indian Museum is known throughout the world for its collection. And we get research scholars from across the globe to come here to see our objects and undertake research and further studies. On this auspicious occasion, I'm extremely glad that we have Mr. Eric Fault, Director and UNESCO representative in India, who will be delivering the Nathaniel Wallach Memorial Lecture. I'm extremely grateful to him for spending his valuable time in being with us here today. And we look forward to hear from him. Thank you. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm very uh, honored to address you today for the Nathaniel Wallach Memorial Lecture at the Indian Museum, which uh, I know is justifiably proud to call itself the oldest museum in the Asia-Pacific region. Of course, I would have preferred to be with you in person, but uh, obviously we all need to be uh, a bit careful a while longer and uh, continue uh, virtual meetings. If not for the unique circumstances, this would have marked my fourth trip to the beautiful city of Calcutta and I would have celebrated with you the recent inscription of the Durga Puja on UNESCO's representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. This inscription is actually the third on our list from West Bengal, following the inscriptions of uh, Bal Fakiri and Chow Dance, respectively in 2008 and 2010. Still on uh, intangible cultural heritage, which in our parlance uh, refers to folklore, customs and uh, traditions, I want to uh, refer to our partnership since 2013 with uh, the Department of uh, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises of West Bengal for the promotion of rural craft and cultural hubs in the state. Implemented uh, by the NGO Contact Base, this uh, unique project aims to uh, transmit traditional indigenous knowledge systems of craft production to the next generation. We're actually uh, embarking on the next phase of this collaboration, which aims to benefit 50,000 artisans across the state. This uh, intervention will help build uh, market linkages for artisans that have been adversely affected by the losses of livelihood caused by COVID-19. In terms of uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and aside from the Sundarbans, which were inscribed on the list in uh, 1987, I hope also that we will have uh, reason to celebrate this year, if and when Santiniketan, which uh, has been proposed for inscription by India, becomes the 41st Indian World Heritage Site. And uh, I also invite you to, to discover, if you have not already, uh, the beautiful book we just uh, published on the World Heritage Sites of uh, India. It is entitled Incredible Treasures and it can easily be uh, obtained from a good uh, bookstore or ordered online. I could uh, also mention other elements, but the point is that uh, there are many links between your city, your region and our organization. Dear friends, the uh, destruction left in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic is not limited to the health realm. As you know, it also has far-reaching consequences for many socio-economic structures, especially for the art and culture sectors. The uh, already uh, precarious positions of all the practitioners of such industries is further exacerbated by disruptions in the entire creative value chain, leading to unemployment and a drastic loss of revenue. Uh, 
That is why very early in recognition of the impact of the pandemic on the creative and uh, cultural industries, UNESCO launched the Resili Art Movement in April 2020. As the name suggests, it is an effort to celebrate the contributions of artists, to encourage resilience, to inspire the spirit of uh, unity and solidarity, while also highlighting the detrimental effects of COVID-19 on the sector. Since uh, its uh, inception, the Resilient Art Movement has hosted more than 275 debates worldwide with the involvement of over 115 countries, encouraging uh, the formulation of various uh, universal as well as regionally specific recommendations. And uh, our New Delhi uh, office has in fact uh, actively been taking part in the campaign through many uh, webinars showcasing the precarious situation of artists and calling for solidarity. And what I actually want to start saying here that is that perhaps the COVID-19 uh, period has in fact provided an opportunity. It has certainly highlighted the importance of culture as a necessary field to be incorporated into developmental policies at the national and international levels, and it has shown that it is essential to safeguard the interests of communities, people, and countries. The importance of institutions such as uh, museums has been reaffirmed and, I would say, not weakened. And here I want to highlight that the, the mandate of UNESCO very much uh, overlaps with the commitment of museums to facilitate the diffusion of culture and education providing foundational insight on the flow of ideas and knowledge. For us at UNESCO, museums uh, possess intrinsic value as custodians of heritage, as a source of stimulation for creativity, but also opportunities for the cultural industries, uh, thereby contributing to the material and spiritual well-being of citizens across the world. In uh, recognition of this, the General Conference of UNESCO adopted, uh, as far back as uh, 1960, the so-called recommendation concerning the most effective means of rendering museums accessible to everyone. I apologize for uh, the long uh, title. Uh, and then in, in 2015, uh, the same General Conference, uh, General Conference of UNESCO followed up by adopting the so-called recommendation concerning the protection and promotions a promotion of museums and, and collections. Another long title, but I, I really invite you to, uh, uh, to look at these uh, recommendations because they remain very much uh, valid uh, today. Even more uh, significantly, perhaps, for our discussion today, the UNESCO World Museum Report of 2021, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, showcased the unique role of museums as important stakeholders in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals uh, particularly those dealing with uh, issues that uh, persist globally, such as uh, discrimination, poverty and inequality, climate change, as well as the fight for gender equality, uh, sustainable development, peace and uh, justice. That's a lot of important word, and yes, I, I, I realize this is a, an ambitious uh, agenda to throw at uh, museums, but uh, shouldn't it be better recognized that museums are unique places to highlight the wonder of our common humanity and also generate knowledge and create a deeper understanding of what unites us. Museums are meant to be cultural powerhouses, but they can also serve as drivers of urban regeneration and hubs of creative and cultural economies. By uh, encouraging new avenues for commerce through local tourist-based economies, they can ensure revenue not only for the museum themselves, but also for the, the larger socio-economic ecosystem around them, which is often rooted in uh, tourism. That is the case in uh, Calcutta, certainly. In addition to being um, repositories of objects, museums also act naturally as spaces that encourage a, a range of debates and discussions, inviting audiences to reflect on a wide range of important issues. 
Often, their engagement with the past can allow for a deeper exploration of the roots of contemporary societal issues than other institutions can do uh, by unpacking complex ideas, acting as a, a sites for thoughtful interaction with other stakeholders. And that's one of the areas that I want to uh, debate a little bit uh, today. And also, I have to say, what a challenge it has been over the past two years for museums. Our uh, most recent UNESCO uh, report uh, from uh, 2021 uh, informs us uh, that uh, because of the pandemic, at least for the first year in 2020, museums were closed for an average of 155 days worldwide. After the publication of that report, uh, which uh, is uh, 10 months ago or so, many of the museums have again had to shut down their doors, uh, resulting on average in a 70% drop in attendance and uh, a 40 to 60% uh, decline in revenue compared to 2019. Uh, closures, reduced footfall, as well as steep cuts in funding and subsidy have made museums struggle to sustain themselves. So uh, how and, and what did institutions, public and private, do to cope with the COVID uh, situation? Well, I'm sure that you know, uh, many museums around the world use this opportunity, I am using the word opportunity again, to increase accessibility to their collections by developing new digital content and formats. This uh, increased engagement with old and new audiences, breaking the barriers of, of physical uh, access. As uh, humanity grappled with the notion of a new normal with increased isolation, museums around the world, we know, rose to the challenge and tried to uh, adapt to the novel uh, situation at hand. Italian museums developed uh, many uh, such uh, initiatives. To name only one, uh, I would mention the one spearheaded by the Fondazione Sandretto Re Rebodengo, which uh, through their Instagram accounts and websites, engage with families, students and teachers uh, by sharing museum content and uh, workshops for all. In uh, Paris, the Musée du Louvre initiated virtual tours where one can literally walk through their ancient uh, Egypt wing and its uh, moat. Technology heralded a whole new era also in uh, Nepal, for instance, where the Museum of Nepali Art was uh, inaugurated online via a 360 virtual tour of the Kathmandu guest house, which was one of the first such experiences uh, in the country, and maybe it would not have happened that quickly uh, otherwise. Museums of uh, both national and regional importance introduced innovative programs to celebrate art, culture, and history uh, to enrich our shared uh, humanity. Here I want to mention the, the National Museum in New Delhi, but also the Odisha State Tribal Museum, which developed uh, interactive virtual tours, uh, while the uh, Salar Jung Museum of Hyderabad and the Museum of uh, Art and uh, Photography in uh, Bangalore collaborated with uh, Google Arts and Culture to make their collections accessible online. And I know, of course, that the Indian Museum too uh, responded by uh, organizing an excellent series of uh, lectures by experts called, uh, I think, Stories of World Culture, uh, thereby enabling their audiences to enrich their knowledge of museum collections and cultural heritage. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic has also served as a sobering reminder of the digital divide that marks the cultural sector too. While many museums found new audiences and formats, Others uh, struggled with access to technology and information, which highlights the, uh, the great variations in the socio-cultural contexts within which uh, museums exist and uh, operate. In fact, uh, many museums were rendered obsolete uh, without the possibility of in-person engagement. And this is a phenomenon that was highlighted by a data compiled by the uh, International Council of Museums, which shows that one in eight museums uh, surveyed uh, have remained closed, and that thousands uh, closed their doors permanently 
uh, due to the continuing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and maybe because also they, they didn't have all the resources than, that others had. While many museums chose to focus on technology to attract a new type of visitors, there were others who elected to uh, diversify or improve their collections by bringing to light new material. They used that opportunity once again. That was the case of the uh, Cleveland Museum of Art in the, in the US, which uh, you may have seen recently showcased stories from storage and uh, displayed uh, rare objects never seen before. The art gallery in uh, Bremen, Germany, did, uh, uh, I believe, something similar. Another fascinating example is uh, offered by the National Gallery of Australia, which during the pandemic uh, continued and increased their consistent reviews and checks into the provenance and documentation of their collection. It led them to uh, identify uh, $3 million worth of smuggled artworks from India, which they will soon uh, return uh, here. Last month, our office organized uh, an event called Returning the Loot, How to Tackle the Illicit Trafficking of Cultural Property in South Asia, where we uh, showcased a, a number of uh, such situations, and in particular, we highlighted the efforts of the National Gallery of uh, Australia. One of their curators was uh, uh, with us uh, and spoke at length about how the gallery has focused uh, a lot of research on the origin of their collection to ensure that they uphold international conservation standards. It is really a fascinating effort and I invite you to, to look at that. But perhaps the most interesting development which uh, occurred during the pandemic is that many institutions uh, broke what is often admittedly their local isolation by responding to the needs of the community around them, including programs that were aimed at uh, increasing wellness. The first example I want to give is uh, the Te Papa Museum in uh, New Zealand, which included a, a section on their website called The Little Page of Calm. Through this uh, initiative, the museum encouraged audiences to relax with jigsaw puzzles made uh, on the basis of their collections, offering quizzes, or simply self uh, soothing by watching videos of sunset or exploring uh, highlights from their collection in a, in a unique slow art mindful viewing experience. Other museums created uh, opportunities for thought-provoking community engagement by dwelling on the pressing needs of uh, the times, such as uh, the degree of uh, seclusion that has been introduced into our lives as a result of the pandemic. The um, Ethnographic Museum of Istria in Croatia curated an exhibition that uh, asked uh, audiences to think over the simple yet complex theme of their digital exhibition, What Are You Afraid Of? Fear in Our Everyday Life. It was done online, of course. Similar explorations were made at the uh, Israel Museum that offered recordings of its exhibition, Seated in Seclusion. In a similar vein, the Museo Reina Sofia in uh, Spain developed and released a film series with a thematic focus of uncertain times, done so, of course, to reflect on the experience of the, of the pandemic. Another interesting example is that of the nonprofit uh, Armory Center for the Arts in the United States, which uh, tried to focus on the aspect of community engagement during the pandemic. They found innovative ways to translate interactive elements and broadcast uh, performances on Facebook and, and, and Instagram. This um, uh, also led to curation of uh, arts uh, projects through the web, like uh, the Public Art Division of the Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, which established a, an emergency relief fund uh, with the help of the Los Angeles City Council for uh, creators who were struggling as a result of the COVID uh, crisis. The pandemic, in many ways, also acted as a, I would say, a portal to take audiences into the intimate settings and the, the behind the scenes of what makes a, an exhibition. This was the case of the Museo Interactivo Mirador in Chile, uh, which uh, filmed its uh, mediators at home, conducting uh, experiments, initiating challenges and hosting discussions, sharing these uh, with, uh, with the public. Closer to home, the, the National Museum in uh, New Delhi recognized the power of harnessing 
the tranquil power of art forms by introducing their series uh, Museum Concerts from Home, uh, which was a, a musical journey inspired by their uh, collections and meant for, for the communities. Additionally, uh, I'm sure you know that museums have uh, also been very uh, uh, active in, in, in contributing and, and showcasing the contribution of health workers in uh, the fight against the pandemic by uh, encouraging the creation of uh, community art that focused on thanking and supporting healthcare professionals. Uh, museums uh, such as the Museum für Naturkunde in uh, Berlin, Germany, monitored the outbreak and provided useful links and information to the public through its um, website. Uh, in more tangible contributions to support the community during this time of tumult, collectives such as uh, Curators Without Borders offered open source templates for making face masks from material that may be uh, easily accessible. Uh, the Rijksmuseum also donated face masks and surgical gloves to hospitals uh, in the Netherlands, uh, for instance. And these are just some examples. The um, well-known Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago uh, used uh, 3D printers to supply hospitals with essential protection kits uh, while the Shed Aquarium, also uh, uh, in Chicago, lent its uh, laboratory equipment to support COVID-19 uh, lab testing. We saw that other museums, uh, such as the Palais de la Science in France and the Smithsonian Science Education Center in the US, did their bit to counter, very important, misinformation uh, to uh, increase public faith in science by providing accessible uh, knowledge to understand the current uh, situation at hand. In Sweden uh, and Norway, a website called Minen was uh, set up to collect personal stories in order to document uh, uh, better, you know, in future, the knowledge of history in the current times. Similarly, uh, Museum Europäischer Kulturen started a hashtag uh, called Collecting Corona to uh, portray and preserve daily uh, documentation of how Europeans are uh, battling the virus. Cultural uh, institutions have also provided material support by offering their physical space as a refuge and shelter to uh, those from marginalized groups such as uh, was the case uh, of the Bibliothèque et Archive Nationale du Québec in Canada. Uh, additionally, the American Museum of Natural History in New York and uh, Castello di Rivoli outside Turin, Italy turn their galleries into vaccination sites. While we uh, sustain altogether uh, efforts to uh, emerge from the pandemic and strive to reinvigorate the cultural sector, we must therefore remind ourselves of the critical value of uh, museums within the context of uh, immediate uh, society and the greater global community. Uh, the difficult period we are painstakingly emerging from shows that we must remain fully committed to ensuring the financial as well as the cultural longevity of our museums. We must uh, therefore look beyond them as not only pillars of heritage and, and culture, uh, but also ultimately as powerful assets for recovery in the post-COVID world. Much like the Renaissance followed the plague, a resurgence of the culture sector must follow the pandemic. More than ever, the world is in need of real connections, of authenticity, and of uh, rediscovering the tangible markers of our history and identity. As we look to the future, museums uh, offer an opportunity to find the seeds of the recovery in our past. They provide a lens of history and heritage that can help to make sense of the present and envision the future. Museums matter as they offer a place of reflection and wonder. And I guess this is why, as I understand it, the Indian Museum used to be called the uh, Jadugar or the House of Magic. Uh, that's the, the, the question is no longer how relevant museums are today. The fact that they hold the key to wonder in the face of despair I think has been well established during the pandemic and the museums ably serve as reminders of all that we value as a human race. 
wonder, beauty, joy, and noble pursuits of knowledge and dialogue. So, in concluding, I invite you to imagine yourself as equal stakeholders in ensuring the longevity of museums, to find ways to mobilize more support and push for cultural policies that will ensure that the museums in the post-COVID world are fully equipped to be champions, not only of culture, but also champions of their communities. Personally, I see museums playing a, a vital role in the years ahead, not in isolation, but as a public good. We must therefore advocate for more investment into museums, not as an investment into the past, but into our future. Thank you.